Welcome everyone to Belt Tutorial and first thing I want to say is that thank you everyone for the comments on your previous video and I really appreciate everything that you guys do for me. If you guys have any questions, as always, I'm waiting you to my Discord channel. If you have some difficulties regarding the tutorials or maybe you have some other different questions and if I'm able to answer, I'll be glad to do this in my Discord channel. You can see the link in the description and feel free to join, you're always welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make a belt and moreover I've included three different types for belt rotation so you could choose the one that fits your game the best. So the first one is smooth rotation where your belt smoothly rotates your camera movement. The second one is the most straightforward and the easiest one is just basically following your camera's rotation every tick. Finally, the third one is having a threshold passing through which the belt will smoothly rotate your camera. But before actually you jump into this tutorial, make sure you watch the video of how to do an inventory cell. You can find the tutorial on your top right corner. So let's go ahead and jump to the video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is our belt. I actually have a static mesh right here. I modeled it in Blender, so there are pretty much a lot of tutorials how to do it. But I'll just use my own static mesh for the purpose of this tutorial. So make sure you have your BP inventory slot or whatever you have named it. What we're going to do, we're going to create another blueprint class. You can do it any folder you want. I'll just do it in the content folder and it's going to be of a class actor and we can call it BP inventory belt like this. Let's double click on it. I will add my static mesh to here. It's going to be my belt static mesh. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees like this and I'm going to scale it down a little this way. We can go ahead, press add and add our child actor. Let's make it a child of our belt. So basically child actor allows us to put our blueprint inventory cell into another blueprint or any other actor. So let's go ahead and choose the child actor class to BP inventory cell, uh, sorry, inventory slot. And what we're going to do, we're going now to position them in the way so that you had inventory slots here. But just make sure that you make distance between your inventory slots. Otherwise, they will trigger themselves. So if you put object in one, they will trigger other ones. We don't need that. So make sure their uh, sphere collisions are not overlapping. Maybe I can just make them a little bit smaller like this. So let's go ahead and position them in the way you want. I'll just do it randomly like this. Okay, so once you're done, you can hit compile and save. Now we can go to our VR pawn. Go to your viewport and we're going to add our child actor again. But now it's going to be our belt. So let's rename it to belt and choose child actor class to BP inventory belt. And as you can see, it's spawned here. Let's rotate our belt a little bit and maybe we can scale it down like this. And now if you hit compile and save, you will see everything works perfectly. So now what you have to do is actually to rotate and position our belt based on our camera position in the world. So let's go ahead to our event graph and we're going to do it every tick. So event tick here, and we're going to create a function update belt. So in this function, we're going to first position the belt in the right way. So let's go ahead and drag our camera. We are going to get its world location, get world location. And we are going to subtract and here right click split structure pin. We are going to subtract maybe 50 or 60 on the Z value. It's up to you. This value will represent the height we subtract from our camera world location to position our belt. So after we have done, we have the result vector and we're going to get our belt. We're going to set world location and our location will be the result of this abstraction right here. And afterwards we connect the execution pin to here. We can hit compile and save, go back to our event graph and drag our update belt function to event tick. Hit compile and save. Let's actually jump to the game and see if everything we have made so far works. So here's our belt and as you can see it moves with my camera. So let's go ahead and put a cube inside, like here. And maybe a pistol to here. And now we can also grab the cube from here and put it back and the same with our pistol, like this. As you can see belt doesn't rotate with our camera so let's go ahead and fix this. So to make the rotation, we first need to make sure that our belt rotation here is all set to 000, and it equals to our camera 000. In case it doesn't, you should adjust your blueprint so it was. In my case, I have to do it, so I will go back to my belt, and I will rotate its mesh uh, to 90 degrees right here, so that when I came to my VR pawn, I had the, the belt rotated in this way, so I had to adjust it here, like this. And as you can see now, I have zero degrees pose in my belt and in my camera because we're going to compare their rotations, so we need them to be the same. So now we have to rotate only our belt's Z value. We don't want to rotate our belt like this. So let's go ahead to our update belt. So what we have to do is to get our belt's rotation. So get world rotation like this. And afterwards, we're going to get the same for our camera. Get world rotation. We're going to split those pins 
like this and we are going to interpret our z value from those two and let's use the function called f interp to constant like this so our current value is our belt and our target value is our camera z value like this so in every tick it returns an intermediate value between our belt's rotation and our camera's rotation so that for instance if our belt is 20 degrees rotated and camera is 30 so the return value from here will be 22.7 then the next tick is going to be like 23 degrees and it's going to be slowly and slowly closer to our camera so let's go ahead and this intermediate value will assign to our belt's rotation so set world rotation and we're going to split the rotation bit from here and connect the return value from here to z so now we have to work on our delta time and interp speed so let's actually go ahead and get world delta seconds that will be our delta seconds and we'll connect this to here and in our term speed we can start with value 30 you can adjust this value to whatever you want that's actually the rotation speed of our belt so now let's actually check out if everything works fine so now as you can see my belt rotates with my movement but i think the speed is a little bit slow so maybe we can increase it to make it more smooth maybe like 60. yeah so so that's how it looks right now but maybe you don't like this movement, I'll also show you how to do it straight away. Get rid of those nodes and connect only our camera's world rotation Z value to our belt's rotation. Like this. And let's see how it looks. So if you like this approach, it's much better. Belt rotates right away when you rotate your camera. But if you want, you can have a little bit different approach too. So now we can make a little bit of threshold passing through which will rotate our belt. So let's go ahead. So now to make a kind of threshold that will control the rotation of our belt, we can go ahead and delete this node right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the camera's rotation, get world rotation, and we're going to promote it to local variable. Like this. And we can call it camera rotation. And we can do the same with our belt. Get world rotation and promote it to a local variable belt rotation like this so afterwards let's go ahead and calculate the difference between those two rotators so let's take our camera rotation and belt rotation we're going to split their structure pins and we're going to subtract z values let's move it a little bit down we're going to get the absolute value from those two because we don't want the value to be negative we just want to compare it with a positive value threshold so let's go ahead and create a variable called belt rotation threshold it will be of a type float and for default value you can choose your own value that will be a threshold after which the belt will rotate to our camera's position so let's go ahead and i'll choose maybe 45 like this and we'll compare if the difference between those two rotations is greater than our threshold like this and let's make a branch node right here so in case it is we're going to interpolate those values so the same way we're getting the belt z value f interp to constant our target is our camera rotation z value Delta time is get world delta seconds, like this, and in terms speed, let's say it's going to be 70. And we're going to get our belt, set world rotation, and split the structure pin, connect the return value from here to Z value of our belt. And it's going to be untrue. So let's jump again in the game and see if what we have done so far works. So as you can see now, if I rotate my camera less than my threshold, belt doesn't make any action. But if I go more than threshold, belt starts rotating towards the camera so like this and i think it's pretty cool you can go ahead and range this so it look better but i'm just doing it for the sake of tutorial 